Baker.com LP, let's play. Make way for now. All the Beyonce. Get lost in this walk through. Live in the game. Just drop the beats and make way for the brains. Haters go rage through you. IT. Gamers wasted in MORPG. Don't forget your buffs. Hey, don't we crazy? Six the fun this. Let it show you the way. Staying up late, making lots of noise. One up to the first 100 coins. You gamers don't play with the blocks and toys. Transcend to a place that don't exist in space. You need help, please come into the LP. It's Cal Lewis on the mic. Nah, I mean, we smoking that vice. Drink some nice. Baker.com, please come subscribe. Hello everyone and welcome to the second podcast for Vega.com. Today we will be discussing the impact of violent games. Today we are joined by the same people as before and we have a couple new members to join us on this podcast today. Let me introduce you to DKS3A. Hey, how y'all doing today? Namor. Hello, hello. Skate Monk. Can he not now? We're trying to do a podcast. Super Conj. My dressing gown is occupied. Kenny Kawai. Hello there, game. Lagaya Rasaru play RPGs right now. <laughs> All right, well, Kenny, you give a little introduction of yourself for the listeners. Okay, Vega, I own a top hat collection, which I keep upon my spaceship, which I use to travel around the universe. I also have a gay bromance often with Skating Monk. I play mostly fighting games, so I am a street fighter, a mortal combatant, and a king of Iron Fist. Look, Aya, do you have anything you want to add for your introduction? Uh, yes. Um, well, first off, my name's Lagaya Rosaru. Um, got the name from one of my favorite RPGs for the PlayStation 1. I am a huge RPG fan as well as a fighting game fan. So pretty much my favorite fighters are Street Fighter, King of Fighters, Tekken, Mortal Kombat, all that other good stuff for fighting games and for role playing games. My all time favorite RPG is Final Fantasy 9. So yeah. All right. Awesome. And we are also joined by Deagleson, who is a listener. So you will not be hearing him, but we are thankful that he came to join us on this podcast. So. Continuing on, I will start with the first question. What do you consider a violent game? For me, obviously Grand Theft Auto comes to mind and the game Mad World for the Wii. I do believe that is the only violent game for the Wii. Anybody else? Again, you took the words out of my mouth. Like, uh, Mad World is definitely one that comes to mind that's definitely violent. I would also say more combat, relatively speaking. Most really b- gory FPS's uh, I, I can name a few but I mean really gory ones most are pretty fine uh, there's probably a couple more but not too familiar with that sort of genre um, I have one my personal favorite of all violent video games which is Postal 2 in which you can break someone's legs pour oil over them set them on fire and then piss them out and like I said Mortal Kombat would probably be like the starting of like definite violent video games after all it's the one I gave the uh, rating system for video games. I don't know about all these violent game things because I mean just about any game out there today is violent. I mean even the, the, the very first game I played you know I was just joking around earlier about talking about it but you know in 86 I was like three or four years old playing Super Mario Brothers and all I could think about is killing turtles and, and Goombas you know. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely agree with Namor, but it's very difficult to find a video game nowadays without violence in it. I mean, if I'm looking at the blurb of a video game, there's always that little fist symbol which indicates there's violence in the video game. I don't know, to me, what is considered a violent game, I'd have to say Grand Theft Auto, and one of my favorite games is um, Ninja Gaiden, the reboot, because of uh, its gore factor. Okay. So, at what age do you think it is okay to play these violent games? I had a really hard time coming up with an answer for this one because everybody is different. You know, at different ages, everyone has different mentalities. But when I thought about it, I rounded it off to about 16 years old. I figure, you know, a 16-year-old is, you know, should have enough sound mind, at least where I'm from, to play these games. I would say 15-year-old. Basically because I know quite a few 15 year olds and one of them mainly just seems very level headed. I feel like they probably take many violence. I wouldn't say below that yet. It's obviously common knowledge that everyone below that plays stuff like it. I kind of, I, I, I agree, but I think 15 is a little still too young. Um, you know, I would, I would want my 15 year old to be concentrating on more important things than, you know, violent video games. I, you know, a lot of these games kids use them for release and you know to act out their aggressions onto video games I mean I'm not blaming the video game I'm blaming you know mainly their parents and stuff but anyways it's a different topic I I think a good age is usually around that 17 year old 17 years old to play you know 
some of these really violent games they have today. I think I'm going to go with the 16 plus mark. I know personally myself, I've been playing violent video games um, since I was about, I mean, I played Silent Hill at like, what, 7 or 8, and I've turned out just fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it depends what, how you view just fine, but yeah. For the most part, I agree. Uh, about 16, 17 for the age group and all kind of stuff. But uh, it, it really depends, like what Vegas said earlier, uh, about the maturity of the level. Because some 12, 13-year-olds have maturity levels of 17, 18-year-olds, and they can probably handle it a little bit better than some some people their age. See, I, this, is subjective, this is very subjective, because it all depends on the content of the video game, how violent the game is, and also, as Vega and DK have said, the mentality of the person playing the game. Okay, I'll give you I, I'll give you an example of what I wouldn't want my child doing. Okay, he's 14 years old, and he's playing Call of Duty. And, you know, he he's playing multiplayer Call of Duty, and you have, like, 10 other people saying, Fuck this, and, you know, you're gonna die, motherfucking bitch, and, you know, just, like, shit-talking his ass off. And then, next thing you know, your son is doing it, and he goes to school, school to do it. And you're like, God damn it, this fucking video game has taught my son how to do all this shit, you know, and that would piss me but, off. But that's not really the video game's fault, that's the other player's fault, not the video I agree, but that's why I was talking about, like, that's why I'd want him to play it at a certain age, not 14 and 15 years old, because as a parent, it is my responsibility to put that on my children, and not the video game. Now, there's like some things I do agree with, all kind of stuff, like, I wouldn't want my... 14, 15 year old child to play like God of War, especially like you know, just set, like a mini game that involves having sex. I wouldn't yeah, want the, my, there's naked ladies in it too. Yeah, I wouldn't want my 14, 15 year old child to be exposed to that. I mean, I, I understand what uh, the aspects of what y'all are saying. Pre-ordering God of War for titties. <laughs> I have oh, that that loud. Okay, do you have anything to add? Uh, for me, I started playing violent violent video games when I was five. So, uh, also, I, I would have to agree with DK and Vega about the maturity level for people, and for what Namor said, um, when it comes to, like, like, say you have a child, I mean, and they're exposed to violent stuff and the explicit language, they're, it, they're eventually gonna learn it anyways in school with a bunch of their friends, so, I mean, you really can't blame them for that. Well, it seems that we've already jumped to the next question at hand accidentally, so I'm going to go ahead and ask that question now. Um, when it comes to, you know, who's responsible for this, is it the parents or the companies? Obviously, for me, it, it's the parents. You know what I mean? It is up to them to show or prevent these games to their children. I agree. It's definitely the parents because video games have a key demographic and they have the the age rating system and the parents have to buy the game for their child to play so the parents are giving the child their the violent video game it it's definitely the parents like it's none of the company's fault the companies know it's aimed for 18s plus i mean they may they may be using a ploy really a nice company strategy just to get some little kids in because that's just profit that is the world of business thank you they're gonna try and get the widest, Cha one of the biggest, <laughs> one of the biggest like demographics into it, even if they're not allowed. But it's still completely their parents. It's completely their parents' will to go and buy the game. So why would it be the company's fault? I mean, it's clearly on the label every single time. It's just the parents are ignorant fuckers sometimes. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. I mean, like, I I fully agree that it's parents. Like, I mean, if I was a parent and if uh, my child had survived the horrendous indoctrination process that I would subject it to I would also make sure like if I was going to buy a game I'd be like okay what's this game do okay fair enough you have to kill a hooker whilst flying a speedboat into an orphanage I mean that's that, I would actually buy that game myself but um, I would think okay this may be not be appropriate for my 10 year old child I'm pretty sure that I was left alone with a copy of Silent Hill so I ended up playing it because my parents were too scared to play it <laughs> mhm. Mm mhm. Mm See, I I come from a very like um I guess guess a rough background. So when I was 13 and stuff at that age, I wasn't necessarily um, immersed in the video games quite yet. But I did love video games um, since you know since I was a little toddler. But 
you know, at 13, I was doing way worse things than what video games were teaching me at all. But, you know, I solely believe it's it's parents. At the same time, I kind of, I, I kind of understand the argument with companies, you know, still subjecting kids. You know, they, they it's all about money, 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 money. And, of course, they're going to make games that kids are going to want to play and beg the crap out of the parents to play. And the parents are just too busy with their, their time and stuff like that. But I didn't really have a parent that was there monitoring my 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 gameplays or what I did. And um, I don't know. I kind of wish I did have that parent. And I guess that's why I feel so strongly about wanting to be that kind of parent for my children. I would definitely have to say it's a little bit like Namor just said a little bit of both parts like it's definitely majority the parents fault uh, responsibility because they know the rating system they know what to expect in the game they can look at the cover and say it's an M rated game they're not they don't need to be really exposed their 9, 10, 11 year old child to the game but at the same time too like I said it's all about money and they're going to keep making the games that's going to appeal to them and they like to beg the parents and like and the parents are going to give in and eventually probably buy it and it's just it's all about money to the companies they don't care I mean they, they probably do care but they probably don't care like uh, what how many like who plays the game as long as they make their money no you're absolutely right the companies they all they see is money and that's the, the truth of it that's the truth of it but I wanted to add real quick in defense of parents you know like I said it is the parents responsibility but at the same time parents can't really control their children going over to their friend's house whose parent might be okay with this you know and you know say my parents aren't okay with it but I go to visit you know so and so and I stay the night slumber party whatever as a child and you know they pop in Grand Theft Auto because their parents are okay with it or don't care and I still get to see that so at the same time it's very hard to keep that kind of content away from children especially like a lot of you said at school you know that's what everybody talks about and with the internet now they can look up anything so I guess I should say that my parents started to blame because they pretty much don't care what game I play or what game I buy. I mean, as long as they're happy uh, with what I have, then I'm happy. And also, most of my gaming experience, I was with my brothers anyways. So they went and uh, bought these violent video games and they were just playing them. And so pretty much my parents weren't really involved in my gaming history it was mostly my brothers well and I remember my little brothers at probably seven and nine years old playing Grand Theft Auto I mean my little brother Vinny was in there and he's just you know killing people and running them over and laughing you know and I don't think he truly understood at that age what it really was he just knew it was manic and crazy but you know when friends would come over and they'd see that they were just like appalled like oh my god you know he just took this hooker into the alley you know did her and you know killed her and he's over here laughing like a maniac you know now don't get me wrong my brothers are sound kids but you know imagine walking into something like that not knowing you know these kids personally you know what would be your reaction well I just had the right reaction that I just kinda got creeped out <laughs> yeah well you know we're in 2012 now, and you know, if you look back 10 years, if you could look back 10 years, <laughs> um, oh, it's no offense, but you know, 10 years ago it was different for for kids growing up. You know, 10 years before that it was even more different. You know, the only thing you can look when you look back from then to now, it's kids have are aging so rapidly. You know, you have 12, 13 year olds have always had children in the past, you know, from just being stupid, but now it's more frequent. They're like just thousands of 13-year-olds having babies, you know? You're like, oh my god. I think that you mean 16-year-olds. <laughs> I don't think no, it's man. I 12, mean, mate. I, I'm, it's documented. I mean, you have to come to the States to, to get that kind of information, but yeah, it's, it's like that here, you know? How the hell does that even work? <laughs> well, impregnating American children. Uh, I was gonna say, <laughs> if you don't know how Shit. that works, Super Conj, uh, you may need to have a talk with your parents about that. This is not the place for that time, but uh, you, you may need well, to have a peace talk. I'm shocked that I've been using hookers this whole time. Your little brother seemed to have caught on to it. You kill them after, then you can just take the money back. Jesus <laughs> Christ, how did I not think of this? I'm surprised you hadn't thought of that. 
I now have okay. something to say, Vega. Go ahead. <laughs> well, pretty much violent video games, having any game that's an age rating above whatever the child's age is sort of a, a forbidden fruit for them. I mean, I used to do whatever I could to be able to play, like, Grand Theft Auto, and I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. They'll either pester their parents to get them this game, or even just, like you said, go around to their friend's house and play it there. You're absolutely right. So that brings me to my final question that I have for you guys. Can you really blame a game for the actions of others? Obviously, through this conversation, it should be a no-brainer of what my answer is. I, my answer is no. There are so many other factors that influence people. You know, It can't all be blamed on the video games. And if you go back before video games were even anything, people were still doing crazy things. So it cannot be blamed on the video games. Though I will admit that introduced at such a young age, that puts that into kids' heads. But again, at the same time, they, they'll hear it at school. They'll see it on Skinamax. They'll see it on TV, hear it from their friends. You know, it, it can't all be blamed on the video games. This is more of a personal subject for me. Mostly because, you know, the Columbine shootings, like the school shootings that happened. The one that was rumored to be, yes. be because of Doom. Well, I... Sometimes I can see myself doing something like that. I hold myself back as much as I can, of course. But I can see myself being as crazy as that in, in a different universe. But I, it definitely isn't influenced by video games. I know it's the deeper mind. I know what they probably went through. I know it, they probably had some anger issues like I do. They probably gone wrong in the head. Probably not because of video games probably because some sort of parent abuse or something and it wouldn't have been about video games it would have been more like the kids at school are absolute dickheads which they really are everyone in school nowadays is out to be a complete dickhead to you i i can see myself i can see them like having a justified excuse for killing them not really justified but I can see them having the excuse of killing them because they are the most annoying pieces of shit alive. Like, even I can jokingly around in my mind say, oh my god, I really want to kill that guy. Of course I wouldn't, but like, I, I can't even bring myself to punch him, but I can think in my head, like, that guy keeps on talking with the, over the teacher, I just want to punch him, and stuff like that. All in all, parents of English children, do not send your kids to school tomorrow, just in case they go to school with super guns. Absolutely. <laughs> that would be why would they go to school on a Sunday skating mo- uh, That's a very good point, Kenny. Stupid. I'll be there. Uh, back my to the subject. Gown. Back to subject. Uh, I don't think it's just video games that, like, um, like they cause influence or other factors. But for the most part, especially around here, the media is definitely... They want to grasp onto something and always uh, they always want to find a blame for something. So here, in the, especially in the past maybe 10 to 15 years, it's all uh, they found video games to grasp on. It's like what Supercon said about Columbine, because they uh, they were like they liked Doom. So ooh, Doom, they they got affected by effect, uh, affected by violent video games, and ever since then it's just been like a whirlwind of uh, just everybody blaming video games for everything. When it's just that, I mean, it can be a factor, but I don't think it's uh, it's definitely not the only factor. There has been violence in many other different medias over different years, like even cartoon, you know, just cartoons like Looney Tunes, Tom and Jerry, that's got a lot of violence and slapstick comedy within it. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that's making video games different to any other media is the interactivity. I mean, it's, a, you know, someone is controlling a character's actions to make them do that, and that's pretty much why the media is clamping down on just video games because mm -hmm. of that level of interactivity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty much going to be my final thought on the whole subject is... And there's evils everywhere in the world, you know, and uh, you can't blame games, you can't blame corporate companies, can't really blame your parents now, you know, because evil is prevalent everywhere in the world. Everywhere you look, school, walking down the street, your neighborhood, you know, wherever you are, there's, there's evils everywhere. And so it's just pretty much that same, it's, it's the world to blame, but, you know, you just gotta pray for the best and hope that, um, you know, you make it out of it. Mm -hmm. Not to get all um, crazy on this like, whole subject, because I know if we get into this conversation, it's going to go down the road, but I honestly don't believe in evil as a sense. I believe of it as, like, there's shades of grey. And, you know, some people do lose their shit and decide that, hey, I'm going to go shoot up the school today because that seems like a good idea. Hey, that Batman movie looks pretty good. But it's the case of the... 
there's usually an underlying cause for everything, like Superconjurer's getting across that it's torment and that torment's like maybe driven to a psychological breakdown. There's never, I don't think in any of these cases they're ever in their right mind, and in that case then that you can't really hold even them responsible. It's the stimuli, but I get what you mean by saying that there is evil, because there's always going to be negative influences that cause these said psychological breakdowns, and for people to, like, finally, like... I mean, you can only push so hard on a person before they snap and lose their shit. I know, because I was going through that before I shot up my school. I mean, what? Jesus, skating monk. <laughs> oh, my God. So, I was going to say, you know, everybody's absolutely right. In my opinion, you know, I agree wholly and completely. It's a lot of things that lead to someone just snapping or breaking. But at the same time, whenever there's a tragedy, whether it's national, international, small town, anything horrendous, people always need something to blame. It's how people cope. They need to know that they can blame somebody or something when something like that happens, and I think that violent video games are the go-to. I think it's, it's a form of catharsis, because, um, like, not to get all psychological on us here, but um, Freud has a theory that basically, by observing or, like, partially participating, like, in the sense of a game, you can actually vent frustrated energy and through that i mean obviously if you get if you got the younger crowd like i was saying before the plus 16 mark then you're not going to be able to look at these like murderers on games and stuff and see them as role models you will basically be able to appreciate the fact that by committing a violent act in a virtual world with no repercussions you can vent actual frustration because i've I mean i've gone on like, I mean, Postal 2 is pretty much my, like, de-stressing game. If I've had a stressful shift at work, I'll come home and I'll beat Gary Coleman to within an inch of his life. And it's quite therapeutic. <laughs> because it actually <laughs> de-stresses you. Uh, I want to go beat Gary Coleman now, too. It's good, you should get Postal uh, 2. It's really fun. So does anyone else have any other thoughts on this subject? I have a final thought. If you ever see me with a dressing gown near a school with a gun in that dressing gown, don't go near me. I might just shoot you. Good advice. Unless you're a police school. officer. Oh, god. Your police officer will definitely shoot you. Okay, so those are our thoughts on violent games, and you can find all of the people who participated in this podcast in the description with a link to their YouTube channel. And with that, everyone say goodbye. See y'all later. Kenny, bye-bye. See you next game. I got you. They're multiplying and I'm losing control and I'll catch you all later. Go to my school, but first go to my channel because if you go to my school first then I might shoot you. But you should go to my channel first. Bye. Nice. <laughs> bye guys. Thanks for listening.